My name is Tim Gillis and I'm the head of Global Indirect Tax for KPMG. Data is a core asset of the 21st century business enterprise. It's here, it's not going away. Value creating analytics will be a top-down mandate from the C-suite to all parts of the organization. Tax authorities understand the nature and the availability of data more than ever and they require more of it and sooner. And that won't be going away either. When I entered the tax profession 30 years ago, I had no idea that this is what we would be facing 30 years later. And yet, as I look at the future, my position is quite simple. This is transformative. I think you'll see more investments along the lines of e-invoicing and e-invoicing requirements and how governments require certification of information on those e-invoices and the assembly of all of the data that's needed on those invoices to make sure that it's a proper invoice. Now, is this disruptive? Yes, it is disruptive. The World Customs Organization has supported a data model that would give full end-to-end -end visibility over a company's trade and customs data. Two-thirds of the member firms of the WCO are now looking at whether they will be adopting that recommendation or not. This puts a premium, I think, within business enterprises to understand their data. So a chief trade officer within an organization needs more visibility over its global data than ever before. So what was previously carried in local countries or local organizations, I believe it's going to be important for the larger organizations today to have a more global visibility over uh, its trade and customs data. DNA can be used in the compliance function to help identify challenges and to find possible exceptions. So you get all of this master file data that comes in and you have to validate, is that data complete, thorough, accurate? Data and analytics capabilities can help through that reconciliation process. You should be able to analyze that data for special circumstances like, are there duplicate invoices? Those are simple. Are there opportunities to effectuate a more efficient invoicing process from our vendors? Are there ways to evaluate whether a BPO is meeting its service level agreements for the processing of invoices? And when you find these things, it allows you to create value both for cash flow and frankly, to hold service providers to a standard that they've committed to in their service level agreements. DNA capabilities can actually help the organization, help the compliance function, honestly, find opportunities for the organization both within and without tax. So if the tax function wants to have an impact outside of tax, there are ways to do that through the DNA capabilities that are used in the compliance function. Technology provides companies with an unusual and unique opportunity to transform its ability to contribute to the organization. As it applies to indirect taxes, because the amount of data that you have to receive for the indirect tax function is so voluminous, so complete, and so thorough, that means that you have a lot of data that you can extract value from. And frankly, it's not just for the indirect tax function, although there are plenty of examples of that. And we can do things today that you could have never dreamed of doing five or 10 years ago, because the way we've structured technology, the way we use technology is so much more comprehensive today than it was five or 10 years ago. And things are moving so quickly, I expect this only to get better every year. The three big trends that we see for indirect tax in the future are broader bases, higher rates, and the real-time processing of tax.